What is up, guys? Welcome to Truth and Transparency. Some of you guys, good afternoon. Some of you guys, good morning. But hello to everybody. The 911 call, March 12th, 2020, made by Jennifer Drake. She said she made the phone call right after she got off the phone with her husband because he was shot. Um, ISP detectives, Van Leuven, Gary Tolson, very prevalent and uh, involved in the Idaho Four murders. ISP, very involved in the Idaho Four murders with uh, doing interviews, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this was a group efforts with the Idaho Four case. And it is how I got myself on the path to look into the Brian Drake murder. Well, all the requests have been in. I've had them. And I wanted to wait for the right time to release this information, which is a 911 call that's never been heard. It's from three years ago. Jennifer Drake made a 911 call from about an hour and 45 minutes away from her husband's office, which was in Bonner's Ferry. So she said that, and detectives said that in probable cause affidavits that she had to call her, you know, where she was, she called 911 from where she was, and that would be the Kootenan County Sheriff's Department, um, their dispatch in Kootenan County. Then Kootenan County then had to transfer her to the Bonner's Ferry slash Boundary County you know, dispatch. And this was the reason that Van Leuven from ISP, as well as Gary Tolson from ISP, as well as Marty Ryan from Bonner's Ferry, um, the, the police chief, these two detectives, this is the reasoning that they said Jennifer Drake's 911 call came in behind um, somebody that was actually uh, in Bonner's Ferry that called. This was the reason is that it was only just behind trickling us uh, ever so slightly behind Isaac Funderburg's 911 call. And they claimed that Isaac Funderburg made his 911 call at which would be like 729, you know, PM. And the only reason that hers was not before Isaac Funderburg's was because she had to be patched on through. Okay. Well, we got the reports back and Miss Drake never called Kootenai County 911. Um, she was never dispatched between the hours of 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. out of Kootenai County. Okay, there was never a 911 call registered between 7 and 8 p.m. Period. Now, we put it out here that we believed based off of phone records that as well as records that Kootenai County would have had, as well as records that ISP detectives would have had to be able to corroborate Miss Drake's statements early on and how she made her statements. All of this was so easily able to be corroborated or, you know, if you want to say supported, uh, substantiated, is so easy as to do everyday work that you do and you go and get your report. Why wouldn't these officers do that? The same officers that are involved in the Idaho 4 case. They're not going to go look at CAD notes. They're not going to go look at dispatch reports. They're not going to look at official fucking paperwork. That's 101. You do that in, a, you know, a drug. But I mean, you do that in a car accidents. You, that is just the most basic shit. Okay. So why? It always comes back to why, 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 why. And we'll get into the why, 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 but here we go. 911 call. Let's see. That everybody knew was not made at the time that they put in a probable cause affidavit for the rest of Dr. Daniel Lee Moore. This time frame, everything to do with this case revolved around this timestamp that never fucking existed. Talk about some crazy shit. I mean, it can't get much more crazier than this. 
So got some more here um let's see which one i want to show or play or um, let's see here Okay. 
Okay. Go ahead, caller. He just was on the phone talking. He just got done working. That's my husband. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he yelled and he goes, he yelled, ow, ow. And I said, what's wrong? He goes, something just hit me, something horrible. I feel like a gunshot just hit my side. And then all of a sudden, it's like, and I kept yelling and trying to yell at him. I'm telling you, if he was conscious, he would have called me back. Okay, okay, where is he at? What's the address there? It's, uh, he is at 6811 South Main Street, Suite B, at Drake okay. Chiropractic in North Idaho. Okay, and what's his name? His name is Brian Drake. I am his wife. Okay, and what's your name? What is your name, ma'am? Jennifer. Jennifer? Okay, Jennifer. I am going to send people up there right now to check on him, okay? What? I'm going to send people up there right now, okay? Thank you. Do you guys call me back? Of course. Is this a good phone number to reach you at the 512-626-3618? Yes. Yes, okay. please call me as soon as possible. Okay, I will, Jennifer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. All right, guys, one more time from the top here. Jennifer Drake calls Kootenan County Dispatch 911. Okay. And this is this call. So this is um, made at, uh, what was it? 840 something. And then, uh, or 850 something. I'll, I'll grab my numbers here. Hold on one second. 911, what is the address of the emergency? Oh my goodness, somebody, please, please. Go up to my husband, he's in Bonner's Ferry. He was on the phone with me and he just all of a sudden yelled out and said he thought he got shot and then all of a sudden the phone went dead. Okay, ma'am, I, I had a hard time understanding you, so can you take a deep breath and slow down for me? I couldn't understand what you said. Okay, I need somebody to get up to this address at 6811 South Main Street in Bonner's Ferry, Idaho. I was just on the phone with my husband, and all of a sudden he yelled and said, ow, ow, in the main street. Right here she says it. I was just on the phone with my husband for the cheap seats way in the back. I was just on the phone with my husband. I couldn't understand what you said. Okay, I need somebody to get up to this address. 
Um, they have the trace locate on the call. They repeat her phone number, which is her cell phone number that does belong to her. So therefore, when you go ahead and you look up the records of the cell phone and you see what time she actually, in fact, called the Kootenai County Dispatch, that is consistent with Miss Oriani's investigation from TNT, uh, not consistent remotely with ISP detectives uh, who had the Celebrite, who had uh, this 911 call, uh, all the patching of the, the 911 calls. They had the report that showed what fucking time she called. Um, they had it all, okay? They knew that this lying bitch, and I can say it because she's fucking lying, all right? This shit didn't happen at no 7.30 p.m. that this phone call was made. The evidence, the circumstantial evidence surrounding why Dan Moore was ever arrested is because of this timeline. Okay. So, but all you got to do, you look up at the Kootenai County, you do your FOIA request, boom, boom, comes back, which we've had for months. Okay. Um, wanted to see if more people wanted to talk about it. Wanted to see if people really, you know, did you ever question that 911 call? What did you think about that 911 call? What did you think about her being on the phone with her husband when he was shot and her collecting a million dollar life insurance policy? Anybody have any thoughts on that? I mean, why are people covering for the fact that Jennifer Drake didn't call friends and uh, what time everything happened? What's, what's the big deal? You got to get this timeline down. Why? Why? Because it's going to get all blown up when the, the 911 call time comes out, you know, of the call. But we're just not, ISP is going to take care of us there and they're just going to bury that. So we can all just, you know, lie about everything else because ISP's got our back. Well, why in the fuck would ISP get your back? Oh, because Marty Ryan has our back. The police, the assistant police chief of Bonners Ferry. Well, why does he have your back? Well, I don't know. Why is he replicating what an eyewitness saw and had somebody use their phone and record it an hour later so that it could be seen on cameras and it's so they can then fudge the cameras and the time of a camera on oh that camera was an hour that that camera was just an hour early or an hour late wait what the fuckerage around this case is insanity but it's like the question's why you know, why are you going, who would ever do such a thing, you know? So again, this 911 call, if she had just got the phone with her husband at 726 PM, this 911 call was portrayed by the ISP detectives, as well as the police assistant chief, um, put in a PCA that it all took place at um, just after 726 PM. This phone call never fucking happened at that time. And in fact, they all knew it and it happened closer to right before 9 p.m. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. These are the same ISP detectives on the Idaho 4 case. And if you don't think this is a big deal, I, I, I pity you. And I usually don't pity people. She states that there was a, she spoke to a man who thinks that he just got shot. Then, I was on the phone with my husband. And then he stopped talking to her. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, call her. He just was on the phone talking. He just got done working. That's my husband. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he yelled. And he goes, he yelled, ow, ow. And I said, what's wrong? He goes, something just hit me. Something horrible. I feel like a gunshot just hit my side. And then all of a sudden... It was like, and I kept yelling and trying to yell at him. I'm telling you, if he was conscious, he would have called me back. Okay, okay, where is he at? What's the address there? It's, uh, he is at 6811 South Main Street, Suite B, at Drake okay. Chiropractic in North Idaho. Okay, and what's his name? His name is Brian Drake. I'm his wife. Okay, and what's your name? What is your name, ma'am? Jennifer. Jennifer? Okay, Jennifer. 
I am going to send people up there right now to check on him, okay? What? I'm going to send people up there right now, okay? Thank you. Do you guys call me back? Of course. Is this a good phone number to reach you at the 512-626-3618? Yes. Yes, okay. please call me as soon as possible. Okay, I will, Jennifer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. And then, so that's the 911 call that get that happens where it goes from Kootenai County, okay, to then um, Bonners and Boundary. And they say that this call only came in right after Isaac Funderburg's because of the patching through, okay, that it, that's why it came in, you know, after the fact, because it had to be patched on through. All right. Well, I just did simple math, even if you want to allegedly say that, oh, this call that never came in on anybody's phone records. OK, there was no spot for it. Um, the length of the call. All right. All of the all of those great things. Um, and it still wouldn't even fit. So not even if you want to say that, I don't know why this wouldn't register on anybody's phone call logs, anybody's cell rights. I mean, no. It didn't register at that time because this phone call wasn't at that time. And the report backs it up. This happened um, an hour and a half to two hours after the 726, you know, hanging up of that phone call. Now, this is Isaac Funderburg's 911 call, okay, that I'm able to then link to another mm, uh, fabricated video evidence that they used. Wait till you see this shit. And I'm going to put it on the screen after you hear the 911 call. Listen to what he's listen to what he describes. Okay. Nine one one. What's the address of your emergency? Um. I don't know the exact address, but it's right across the street from West Walls. Um, I don't know. I just heard gunshots go off, so I thought I'd call it in. Okay, and uh, what direction? Um, it's like, it sounds like it came right from almost behind Far North, like in that neighborhood back there. How many? Uh, two, I believe, is all I heard. And then I saw someone running, too, and I shouted at them, and they just looked back and kept running, so. Okay, what direction did they start running? Um, it's going like towards downtown, but they ran like back in this neighborhood back here. Okay, did they seem injured? Um, no, they did not, but it, it was just all like a super suspicious like thing to happen right then, so I don't know, I thought I'd call it in. Okay. Um, thank you. I have another 911 coming in right now. Um, if I need anything else, I'll call you back. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Bye. And they would lead you to believe that that, oh, other 911 call that's coming in. Oh, that's Jennifer Drake calling. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, guess what? The only way that that's fucking possible is if Isaac Funderburg's 911 call is not at 730, but in fact at 8. 56. Boom. So here they want you and lead you to believe that Isaac Funderburg. Oh, she just says it there. Oh, I'm getting another 911 call. I'm going to have to let you go. I've never heard of such a fucking thing in my life, but whatever. Um, but they want you to believe that that's, that that's the, that's the narrative. Well, now all you just did was you made Isaac Funderburg's 911 call? Not at 7.30, you dumb fucks. But that's fine. We'll get we'll get to all of that. So again, you would think that the easiest thing to do if this was all legit is to just show the report, show the show the where's the report with the time of the of the 911 call. Both of these calls, Jennifer Drake, okay, and Isaac Funderburg, there's a report that goes with it. 
well, what's the timestamp? And then there's all the notes. You hear her typing. That's all typed out and has a timestamp that goes with it. Okay. Now, when I was able to put two and two together, that this whole thing to include, you know, um, just everything around it now is who's who's in charge of setting this all up why did jennifer drake receive a call at 744 from boundary county and she's like well you guys called me i didn't call 911 see you guys called me bitch what are you talking about you didn't call 911 <laughs> you made a 911 call it's because you guys realized after the fact fuck we have to bury all that shit because somebody else called in the fucking shit before and they didn't you know jennifer drake didn't know that so her stupid ass calls it in. Okay. As much as this happened. Now. So here we go. How was I able to do this? Well, I wanted to see if Isaac Thunderberg and his report saying that he got in his car, he was driving around, he was trying to find this person that was like on foot, right? <laughs> like, Why? Why? You just see somebody walking. You think that they, you think they shot? Like you just hear gunshots. You look around, like you didn't witness somebody getting shot. You didn't witness somebody shooting somebody. You heard gunshots. Okay. That's what happened. Um, and he heard them back behind the coffee shop. Okay. Back in that little area, which is El Paso. There's a road over there, whatever. Well, lo and behold, there's a video that surfaces. And I'm like, wait a second. Why is this video surfacing? And because Isaac Thunderberg says, oh, I saw this guy walking and I shouted at him and I was like, hey, hey, was that you? That's what's in the PCA. This is what's in the PCA. Hey, hey, is that you? And he's like, this guy turns back. You know, Van Leeuwen writes this in the PCA. This guy turns back, looks, and then he kind of takes off. Well, I wanted to get my hands on that tape. Like, what is, what is this all about? Like who, where, where was this? How did somebody get this on a recording device? Unless Isaac Funderburg has a rain camera or cameras period, but how in the world would they actually have this interaction on camera? They wouldn't, right? But they did. And I said, no fucking way. I said, well, let me take a look at that. So um, let's see here. Mm, let's go with this. It's amazing what you can get your hands on um, when you ask, you know, So there is such a thing as FOIA requests. So a FOIA request went in. Okay, here you go. Record not known to exist between the timestamps of 7 and 8 p.m. Okay, March 12th, 7 and 8 p.m. Um, right here, record not known to exist. But I said, but wait, there is a 911 call. Because this was just me showing my steps, showing my steps. But wait, there is a 911 call. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's just not between fucking seven and eight. You know? All right. And so, oh, it's because it's during Lana's time when Lana said it happened. Just making sure. So then. So there you go. That's proof one. Hi, guys. Uh, proof two is, let's see. Then I went back to this old timeline that they wanted to produce and say, they said that figure seen walking right to left in front and uh, figure seen running right to left. Okay. And I noticed because on the left hand column here, it's, the time of a, the time of the camera, but on the right hand column, it's like, well, some of those timestamps were all off, and we had to like 
manually put them up against the other ones that we knew that were right. And that's how like we were able to calculate it. So here I noticed that on these figure scene running and figure scene walking, that this shit was all whack. And that, but really it said 20 and 27, 41. And I said, huh, interesting. I said, but they're saying that that camera is wrong and it's really an hour basically off. But this one is like fucking three hours. Okay. And that it's at 7, 27, 41 seconds. Okay. So I said, that's interesting because I went ahead and obtained this video. <laughs> These are some motherfucking cheaters. Let's see here. Mm, we'll download this. I'm going to zip file myself. See how I want to do it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, well, these, so these dumbasses, when they were creating this fabricated evidence after the fact, um, they forgot to, um, they forgot that they made a video and they had the actual audio. Okay, so what they forgot to do is make sure the audio wasn't playing. Because as you can see here, listen. See how you can hear um, the cars going by, okay? You're gonna see this figure come out of, there you go. And somebody is using a cell phone. The person then who they're having do this stops, okay, turns back around and, lo and looks, but nobody yelled anything. They just walk. Nobody's yelling anything. They stop and then they turn back around. And then they take off walking. Okay. Now the reason this is important. Okay. The reason this is important is because, um, First of all, that is not a ring camera, number one. That is not a surveillance camera of any type. That is actually somebody's fucking phone, okay? And they made it, all right? They made it after the fact, and they made it with a guy that is wearing khaki pants, okay? And a, you know, uh, obviously a dark, some type of dark jacket. OK, and they're doing it, though, not for this camera, not for this video, these fucking idiots. They were doing it so that it would be seen on the other cameras, the ones that don't have the audio, the business cameras that are seen or the traffic cams and shit like that. This is the same exact description of that person because I could blow it up and, and I have and zoom in on it. What that person is wearing is the same exact clothing that the police chief, uh, assistant chief was wearing that night when he interviewed at 822 a guy by the name of Isaac Funderburg. Why is that important? Because when you go and you look at this, it says 827 and 41 seconds right there. They replicated this shit. Okay. 
because I can't wait to see the camera four and camera seven that is allegedly of this happening where they move it to 727. They're saying that the cameras are off. No, those cameras aren't off. Nobody yelled at that person to turn back around. What the fuck is going on? You know, what are they doing? Nobody yelled. Nobody said, hey, hey, is that you? He just, this guy just turns around like that. Why would you ever do that? Why would you ever do that? You would never do that, right? This shit is as wild as it comes, but you know what? I can prove it all. And that's all that matters. I can fucking prove every single piece of this. And I can prove it with all of their own shit. The same way that Richard Allen's attorneys can prove everything that they're saying with all of their own shit. This is some sick fucking shit right here. This is crazy. Hold on one second. Let me go like this, go like this, go like this. Let's go like this. Now I'm going to play Isaac Funderburg's 911 call again. Nine one one. What's the address of your emergency? Um, I don't know the exact address, but it's right across the street from Les Schwab. Um. I don't know. I just heard gunshots go off, so I thought I'd call it in. Okay, and what direction? Um, it's like it sounded like it came right from almost behind Far North, like in that neighborhood back there. How many? Uh, two, I believe, is all I heard. And then I saw someone running too, and I shouted at them, and they just looked back and kept running. So. Okay, what direction did they start running? Um, it, going like towards downtown, but they ran like back in this neighborhood back here. Okay. Um, no, they did not, but it it was just all like a super suspicious like thing that happened right then, so I don't know, I thought it was all Thank you. I have another 911 coming in right now. Um, if I need anything else, I'll call you back, okay? All right. Sounds good. Yeah, bye. Bye. Right there. Looks back. But nobody says anything to him. Nobody says anything to him. That, like, the, what are they thinking? I will find a fucking needle in a haystack. Look, it turns back. No one says anything, you fuck. Keep going. <laughs> Woo! You are one sick puppy, Marty Ryan. You, I got you. Boom! Cheaters. For what? Who got some of that money? Who got some of that mill? Who got some of that mill? Who was Brian Drake having sex with that was super pissed? Nobody would call 911 in to say, oh, I heard some gunshots go off, but I didn't witness anything. And then yada, yada, yada. But hey, that's the that's the call that came in, guys. This this guy, for whatever reason, did it. And it um, uh, there was a. This is just wait till you see all, all the timestamps of these reports. This is crazy. Okay, this is fucking insanity to the point of uh, now I know why they couldn't just leave this as a, you know, 
an unsolved homicide and uh, and why there was no media surrounding this because they needed to, if anybody like myself or any of the other sleuths out there, people running their channels would have gotten a hold of, you know, anything to do with this case. Um, it's not hard to, to get to the bottom of it uh, because it's just that obvious, but it's the same. Uh, it's the same people that are involved in the Idaho four case. That's how I came across that. This is why. Um, we don't even know those answers. Oh, but we do here at Truth and Transparency, don't we? Again, those of you guys just joining us, here's Jennifer Drakes. Um, she did not win the Academy Award, but we will play it again. She did attempt to win an Academy Award. She failed miserably. Um, so here is Jennifer Drakes, 911 call after she had her husband um, set up to be murdered. 
Yes, okay. please call me as soon as possible. Okay, I will, Jennifer. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Well, 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 um, let's see here. He was murdered on 312, okay, 2020, okay? And she was given a check by 4-3, 2020. I mean, wow. Mur I mean, murdered. He had his autopsy done on 316, 2020. His autopsy was done on 316. Okay. Fucking Omaha cuts a fucking check for $1 million. That's what, two, three weeks later? Three weeks later, cuts a check? Cut a check. Three weeks later. Who is the, who is the insurance? Oh, oh, no way. Don't even tell me. It's one of those church going group motherfuckers. Because I believe that I think I now know who her insurance agent was that set all of this up. Oh, hell no. Oh, my God. Have you guys ever heard about that? That is very fast. You know, cut a check three weeks later. Have you guys ever heard of such a thing? Have, would Now, if you're a detective in a case, let me ask you guys a question. If you're a detective in a case and you find out that little wifey poo gets her checky poo cut to her, uh, you know, three weeks later is getting that fatty fucking mill. Would that not, I don't know, raise every hair on your back to stand like straight up? Because I think it would. But not in Idaho. Shit. We have no common sense. We have no logic. And these are the people that are um, investigating and writing up reports for the Idaho four murders. <laughs> And you get you guys think that I'm not over here proving how fucked up the Idaho four murders are? I'll debate anybody in that case. Because it's this case that's proving everything that Ann Taylor's about to go prove for Brian Kohlberger. And I just hope to God Brian Kohlberger is not the person that did this. Because if he gets off because of these fucking derelicts, somebody might want to put security on Steve Gonsalves because I would be in his shoes and I would be one hot, pissed person. Um, I love you, Lana. You cracked me up. Thank you so much. Hi, Lana the Badass. Appreciate that. Um, I've just never seen um, any of this in my life insurance company needs to be informed says woody woodpecker i like that name um i had to go i had to get a probate lawyer in louisiana and go through court yep now we know why they won't release a 9 one call for the idaho four case well i'm just curious about all of that thank you for the person that gifted the memberships for um anybody and everybody that got one um this is this is all about receipts receipts and more receipts this is insane, okay? And they all knew about it. But how would this get buried? You know what I mean? Um, I, I I don't understand how you wouldn't just look at a piece of paper that had the report and you saw what time the 911 call comes in. And you have Jennifer telling ISP that she didn't call 911. Look at, no, I didn't call 911. Look at, here's my phone. Yeah. You didn't call at 732. No shit, Jennifer. You called it. They dispatched your 911 call at 859. 859 p.m., Jennifer, is when they dispatched your 911 call. 859. That is not right after 726. 
I don't know if people in Idaho cannot count, cannot add, cannot retime. Um, and then you have the people, um, Lana, get the million dollars from insurance pay company for reviewing the truth and the due pay. Oh, they can give it to me because if that's the fa if that's facts, I want the mill. Um, actually, I, I would just want half. They can donate the other half. You know, the insurance company, we can split it. Um, you know what? That actually brings me up a good point. I could bring this up to this is an insurance fraud. So if Idaho State Police does not want to fucking arrest this person, I bet you um, the insurance company would take would would take a look at this. And I think fraud has a statute of limitations of like, I don't know. I, I would think it has a couple years on it. Um, and all she had to do, Jennifer went so greedy. And you know why I think she became so greedy is because I think a lot of people got their hands on the mill. I don't think just Jennifer got her hands on that mill. Um, but I think that mill was cut up like some cocaine, but it's, uh, because immediately she went ahead and did a wrongful suit against a civil suit against, uh, Dr. Dan Moore. And that's how I was able to get my hands on all of this because of her stupid ass. Because when you go, she went civil and all of this stuff then was coming out in this civil suit which was online, which is how I found, because I started researching uh, Gary Tolson due to the Idaho 4 case. And when you do shit, I don't care if you want to say that someone's a dirty cop or they're not. I'm not here to judge somebody if they're a dirty cop or not. I'm here to judge that they're stupid. This is stupidity. This isn't just stupidity, though. When is it? I mean, you didn't you. Gary Tolson and Van Leuven ISP were in on all of these interviews, all of them. So this is f absolutely disgusting, okay? And either they're inept, okay, or they purposely did it. And, and I don't honestly know what's worse because I think any case that either one of these schmucks has been involved in needs to be coughed back up because I guarantee you this is the type of shit that's going on. You know, this isn't the first time that these people have done this. I mean, maybe it's the first 911 call that Jennifer Drake's called to try to win a Razzie award. But she got greedy. Okay, period. Jennifer Drake, and she probably had to get greedy because everybody got their hands on that mill. And she thinks that she's protected. I don't care who's protected. The insurance company's probably gonna be pretty pissed about their fucking million dollars. They're probably not going to give a shit about Brian Drake or Dr. Moore. They're not going to, they don't know any of those people. You just try to scam our fucking company. So maybe I'll go that way. Maybe I will go through the insurance company because I think Omaha would listen to me. And some of you guys seem to think that Omaha would pay me. And I know I could use that half a mil. <laughs> I mean, who could use a half a mil? I'll just take the whole mil. They'd be very interested, says Kat K. You think so? Well, I guess we need to find out who was the insurance agent. Um, so, again, you can't, uh, you can't make this stuff up. It's here in black and white. Um, I will be discussing it in more depths uh, tonight uh, to go over and break down even more so of I'm going to put some side by side. You guys can uh, like, you guys can be the deciding factors if you think certain people look alike, but this is disgusting. Um, this was planned, staged, and nobody thought that Isaac Funderburg or anybody in that town would call 911 earlier and talk about some gunshots. Okay. Uh, there was something that happened at over in the three mile area. Um, but there was, there was multiple things going on at that time. And then what Bonner's Ferry did is that they just roped everything as one call. Like that, that's all had to do with 6811 Main Street. That's not what happened. That's not the truth, but that's how they were trying to cover it. Um, Isaac Bunderberg clearly says that he heard two gunshots, you know, uh, not one. All right. Because the shooting out of the window was, that was, 
that was just to create the scene too. That wasn't how anybody, maybe we'll just call Omaha live. You guys just want to give me, you, you want me to just give Omaha a call right now? We'll call them live. Um, so again, we'll, we'll review a bunch of stuff later on. Um, <laughs> someone says, hell, 10 grand would be sweet. Um, so Kootenai, Kootenai, Kootenai County. Is that it? Kootenai? There you go. All you need is proof. I got nothing but proof. It's all about going and working different ways, you know. Oh, Farmer, what's up, man? Nice work, Lana. You rock. I'll take that. Um, somebody said, uh, you know, have you? Uh, yes, I have spoke with the Moore. Uh, has Lana Brain spoke with Dr. Moore or anyone on his team? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty fancied by the more clan, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna go ahead and I think we're gonna have to call uh Omaha live. I know if someone tried to steal my million dollars, I'd be so pissed. I also know that if someone tried to kill my brother and succeeded, I don't know why any of the people on Brian Drake's team you know, aren't like, dude, what's up? I want to hear what this person has to say. I'd want to hear about my brother's murder, right? Well, I can tell you that the only narrative that's being owned right now in Bonners and Hayden and that Coeur d'Alene area, um, and I'm about to expose the heart of the city church. I'm exposing all of you people at heart of the city. So I'm going to just take you guys down one by one. Um, and I'm going to take down your whole ring and come and stop me. Somebody come and stop me. I'm going to do it all legal. I'm going to do it with my brains. I've been working this case very, very hard since the summer. And uh, when you, I cannot believe that they, ever tried to frame uh, the, uh, the family that they did. They, I just can't even believe it. Um, I have no words, none. These people are really amazing. And uh, like, I just, I literally, like, you couldn't pick the wrong, you, you should have picked somebody else. Um, why didn't you go with the transient that you had? Why didn't you go with that Stephen Hartman transient guy that was living at the casino for, you know, uh, 60 days. Oh, you kind of couldn't because he was your FBI what informant. Yeah, I got that. I sniffed that out a hot minute ago. Um, you know, but the question is, is who pulled the trigger? You know, who had the guts uh, to shoot Brian Drake and then just let him bleed out because he wasn't instantly dead. OK, and he didn't have his phone to call for help. That phone was shut off and then it was turned back down and then it was shut back off. Uh, so much so that they were reading his text messages. And that would be Marty Ryan, that I believe, that was reading his text messages. Coeur d'Alene is pronounced Coeur d'Alene. Thank you. Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> uh, uh, Great job, Lana. You are undeniably the hardest investigator I'm aware of. Thank you. I appreciate that. Those officers should be should be khakiing in those khaki pants. <laughs> that was funny. Thank you, VG113. I love all these names. Um, yeah. They picked who they don't like or feel threatened by. Interesting. Well, I think they picked who they're jealous of. That's what I think. I think that jealousy and envy run way deep in that sick, twisted area. Because I'm just going to put out all Bonner's secrets until somebody wants to step up and tell the truth. I'll just keep on exposing secrets. I'll just sit here and 
yap, yap, yap away. Uh, but guys, at the end of the day, I, I feel bad. I don't know if Brian Colbert is innocent or guilty. I have never looked at the evidence. Um, I could tell you that once I would look at the evidence, I would be able to tell you if I thought he was innocent or guilty. But I can tell you this. There is no body cam of that sheath, everything surrounding that sheath. And that's the only thing that is connecting Brian Colberger to the murders. And that is problematic. That car should be lit up like a fucking Christmas tree with all types of shit inside of that car. Um, even if it was a cleanup job, it would be, if it would have been cleaned uh, a sign of that. Um, I, I believe wholeheartedly in um, Miss Vargas's work. I believe wholeheartedly in Mr. Roder's work. Um, I have my fortes. Those two people have theirs. I think when you surround yourself with amazing people that want to be part of the home team, um, you know, go get them, take on cases. You surround yourself with the right people. You can get to the right outcomes. Um, and so I believe in Scott Roder. Scott Roder said there's no way that that car doesn't have anything in it. If it in fact was the car that was there and that he got in it. Um, it is in, in, in the scene, if it's as bloody, you know, Scott Roder hasn't seen the crime scene though. So there's just so much things that like you, we don't have, but you give me a case that I can have the material. Um, I'll go up against anybody and what I do hands down. So, but I think at the end of the day, what the most important part is whether or not Brian Cooper is innocent or guilty is that there's a process and it has to be done the right way because you wrong one man, you wrong all men because you never know when it's going to be you or the ones you love. So you have to stand up for that. And that's all this is about. Bonner's Ferry, Boundary, uh, Hayden, none of those areas had, did any of this correct. Uh, Jennifer Drake should have been suspect one from day one because of the nature of the crime. She was on the phone, ironically, with her husband while he was shot. Her husband was murdered. The wife becomes suspect one. You have to rule her out. And you would have just ruled her right in because of all of the inconsistent statements. Okay. And then the 911 call and what time it was at. I mean, everything. The only way that that's getting buried is if you have help on the inside and Jennifer Drake did. Jennifer Drake had the help of Marty fucking Ryan and I can prove it. So I'm coming for you. Take that to the bank. Peace out. I will see you guys tonight because we're going to break it down for all my night owls. They need to know what's up. They need to hear straight from the 911 call. FOIA is a very, very important and useful tool. We use it the right way. All the FOIA requests that Truth and Transparency Home Team has ever done, it has produced uh, amazing results. And this is by far one of the top results that it has ever produced, which is to prove that 911 call completely, completely fabricated. And they all fucking knew it, period. They knew it. The cops knew it. Law enforcement knew it. They're the ones that buried it. So Jennifer Drake is not the only one. It's everybody that was involved in that. And that would be the prosecutor. That would be um, ISP, two detectives. And that would be Bonner's um, uh, assistant police chief. And I would have to say the chief because if, if you're employing somebody like Marty Ryan, you know what a piece of shit he is. So there you go smack it all together, put a little bow on it, and I'm going to mail it. And I hope that they take everybody down because the evidence is there. And I know that Omaha is going to be coming knocking on Jennifer's door um, once they get the 911 call, the timestamp, and the lies. So, and Omaha's got some money. Maybe, you know, maybe they'll toss some money to, to add to the already, I think, amazing investigation, but whatever. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for the new memberships. Thank you guys for anybody that, uh, purchased gift memberships. That's amazing. I love when you guys do that for other people. Keep it up. You guys rock. Um, any, anything and everything helps. So if you guys are from the area, if you know anything about any of these cases, please use the email address to communicate. Um, if you don't hear back, that doesn't mean that it wasn't read. Um, I have a, a ton of stuff to go through when I go through it. Um, I try my best to respond to everybody, but it, it is hard. Um, so thank you again. And we'll, we'll end on one last, um, 
just because I think it's priceless. I mean, who has somebody recording them doing this? Like, wow. Like, you just got caught, bro. Here you go. Let's just go ahead and do this. What amazing police work right there. Unbelievable. Okay, guys, there you go. We'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, that's clearly not a fixed camera, is it? Yeah, definitely not. Why is there a napkin? It's my napkin. I have I have reasons for everything I do. I'll tell you one day. All right, guys, take care. Again, keep on rocking.